in the course of our news diary right here at K24 this far, where Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Motiangi, accompanied by Principal Secretary Karanja Kibisho, Inspector General of Police Hilary Mutiambai, Director of Criminal Investigations George Kinoti, and Director of Public Prosecutions Nurdin Haji, this morning are expected to unveil a state of the art 3500XL genetic analyzer at the government chemists department headquarters next to the Kenyatta National Hospital. So this story is still ongoing and we shall definitely keep tabs with it as it continues to develop. Elsewhere is that a petitioner has filed an application before the devolution committee challenging the prolonged absence of West Pokot Deputy Governor Dr. Nicholas Atudonyang from West Pokot County. The petitioner will be appearing before the committee this morning at 11 a.m. That means any time from now to seek clarification on the continued stay in outside in and outside of the country by Atu Donyang, who is Governor Professor John Lonyangapur's deputy. Now, Atu Donyang is based in the U.S. and is rarely seen in West Pokot. Now, also a story that has already taken its new cycle as of now is from Machakos County, where as we speak, Dr. Alfred Mutua is officially opening the Machakos Cancer and Research Facility at the Machakos Level 5 Hospital. The center is the first of its kind by a county government and will offer free pathology, laboratory and chemotherapy services. Governor Mutua expressed uh, optimism that the county has a higher a team of oncologists and other specialists to serve at the facility. So that is definitely one of the events that we interacted with during the previous hour of this particular show. Elsewhere is that the National Assembly's Sports, Culture and Tourism Committee is on a two-day retreat at the Hilton Hotel in Nairobi to deliberate on the Gaming Bill 2019, which seeks to regulate betting and gaming activities. Cabinet Secretaries Fred Matiangi of Interior, Joe Musheru of ICT, and Treasury Zukuria Tani are expected to give their input to the bill this morning at the same venue. Now also another story that has already taken its new cycle today courtesy of even interaction that we've had with our reporters in the region is that the national population and housing census continues countrywide. The headcount which kicked off Saturday has faced some challenges with many urban dwellers yet to be enumerated. The exercise comes to an end on Saturday. 31st of August this year and we expect much more in as far as that particular story is concerned and we shall keep getting briefs and updates from our reporters on the ground. Also remember that the government spokesperson that is Colonel Cyrus Oguna is expected to brief the nation regularly on the progress this far and therefore we shall be getting to teleposters towers if not during the daily brief then during our subsequent uh, bulletins for an update on exactly what will be coming forth uh, from uh, government in as far as the ongoing census is concerned the hashtag is the daily brief or k24 daily brief at k24 tv at sam w Njeroge at shiksha aurora and we shall be sampling your feedback in as far as the issue that we have raised so far are concerned. Remember the question of the hour was do you agree with Ezekiel Mutua's directive on Wamlambes, Wamnyonyes together with Tetema songs? So Shiksha Aurora will be standing by with that particular update and will be in a position to brief us on exactly what will be happening. Now we need to take you to the courts this morning. And right about now, there we have it. This is an ongoing case in court as we speak now and would like to cross over to the courts and listen in then when we return we'll be giving you much detail in as far as what is happening here is concerned yeah
And uh, the case in court right now involves a Keroche Breweries. You remember that we saw the office of the DPP move with speed to arrest both the CEO and the, ch and the proprietor. That is uh, Tabitha Karanja together with the husband. That is Joseph Karanja. And in court this day, we are informed that they are filing for an anticipatory bill. And we shall be linking up with our team on uh, location to brief us on exactly what will be coming forth from the court this morning. Now we need to take we need to take you back to Uasingishu County and remember uh, Timothy Simwa did tell us uh, that uh, the land or at least landowners in Uasingishu are complaining of exorbitant land rates and there is Timothy Simwa who's now joining us with an update on that particular story. So thank you for joining us once again Tim. Kindly bring us up to speed with what you've gathered in as far as this story is concerned. Of, of course, some uh, under the governor, uh, Jackson Mandago, was in Gishu, has actually laid out a plan to make uh, its headquarters, that is Eldoret Town, to, uh, to make it a city. Uh, this quest, of course, will come with a number of measures that will ensure that the county government uh, collects enough revenue to upgrade some of its infrastructures uh, so that uh, this city status is attained. Uh, but one of them, some has happened to be increasing the land rates. Uh, I'm told that uh, over time the county has reconsidered the amount of money uh, plot owners or rent payers who are paying previously and uh, going forward this amount has been revised upward and it's something that has actually caused uproar from uh, the part of those uh, who, who've been uh, paying this money in this county. Uh, they are saying that uh, the increment is just disproportional uh, compared to the you know value of some of these uh, uh, lands, of course, depending on which uh, uh, part of the town the, uh, you stay. So Sam, just allow me to bring in uh, uh, Cape Korea Menjo. He has been, uh, uh, you know, we've talked to him on other matters, but today uh, he'll be uh, actually trying to highlight for us exactly what is the issue at point and why you think, uh, why you are protesting this move to increase the uh, land rates because one would want to think making a lot of a town is a, is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. A city rather. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, sure enough, if, if there is any increment on anything in town, particularly on, on land rates, it is important also to consider the values of some of these plots. You know, most of the town is actually rural setting. And if they demand such a huge amount, like for instance, areas like Imumu, which is a residential place, uh, the plot owners are having a quarter of plots have been paying uh, 200 shillings per annum. But now that one has gone to 4,000 shillings, almost 5,000 in, in the new valuation. Now uh, CBD, CBD for instance, the, the plot owners have been paying 30,000. Now that one is going straight to around 120 per annum. So all these are astronomical figures which are not sustainable, considering the economic situation currently is not favorable for some of these uh, increments. That will also, it will be loaded to the, uh, the, the, the tenants. The tenants will transfer the same burden to the consumers. And finally, you'll get the business will just crown to a hole. So what uh, I think basically what they need to do is to uh, use a percentage point, you know, the rating act, also has several ways of increasing these rates. I'm not saying they should not increase, but not the way they have done. The way they have done is quite, uh, uh, quite high, and it is going to render most of the plot owners, you know, in, 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 in capable of uh, paying those, uh, those, those rates. And already, we have a lot of uh, people who are yet to settle uh, all the rates, leave alone now the increment. Quite a big number of them are not able to pay those all the rates because of the, the uh, penalties involved. And the kind of economy, the way it is now, you see, this is a farmer's town. When the farming is, is in doldrums, you find that most of them are not able to sort things out. And the business also is low. So these are challenges they have to consider. And you don't, it is not conducive or even that not the right time to, this, to do this kind of uh, adjustments, particularly when we are facing the economic uh, downturn we are facing now. Perhaps my last question, Mr. Major, would be uh, this sort of arrangement would also involve pu uh, public participation. Are uh, you telling me there was no any sort of uh, public participation uh, when these proposed uh, uh, land rates were made? Well, they have given to some people who may be interested in developing Eldoret into a city. But now public participation is what we are now urging. Most of the people who are paying rates to come forward and have a look at the, what, they have, what is captured in, the, in this uh, valuation role. Because as it is, it should not see the light of day because unless they want to kill the businesses and kill the town. Is moving to court, to court an, an, an option? Yes, briefly. Yeah, we still have time 
to go through with uh, many, many of the stakeholders, we discuss at length and see the options available. If they are not ready to listen, that the courts will be able to listen to us. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Major. Sam, that was one of the uh, landowners in Elry Town, of course, who have come out to protest the new uh, proposed land race in town. Of course, we are, to we are told that uh, uh, what uh, um, actually the, 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 the rationale behind this move by the county government is just to make sure that they collect enough revenue that will go towards uh, upgrading most of the social amenities around this town uh, in its quest to make Elry a city. Back to you, Sam. Thank you so much, uh, Tim Seymour, for that. But maybe just a quick one to you. Is there a need to make Eldoret Town a city? Uh, your question, Sam, I didn't get you clearly. Well, Tim, the question I'm asking you, having reported from Wasingishu for some time now, is there a need to actually make Eldoret Town a city? Yes, um, I would say there is uh, every need actually to upgrade the status of Eldoret. Actually, some this is uh, a terminus that actually serves uh, the, uh, north, the, the, the uh, larger North Rift region and even the western uh, uh, region of this ca ca country. And as uh, I told you, some in our other early interactions, is that uh, uh, one of the country's uh, you know, biggest referral hostel is right here in this place. And uh, you realize that even the only uh, land cost in the larger North Rift region is best in Eldoret. So many services uh, for the people who live in, in the North Rift and, and Western part of this country are actually best here in Eldoret. And of course, uh, even coming at a time when we are having a national census, perhaps those figures will also point out the, uh, the, the, the need as to why maybe time has come to upgrade this town because the population on, its, on the other side has actually uh, grown uh, tremendously and it continues to grow every other day some. So much, uh, Tim Simwa, for that update live from Wasingishu County. And of course, keeping tabs with what's happening closer to you, what's happening where you are, we need to bring in our reporter, Kigotho, who's joining us live from Nakuru County with a security update from that particular region. We expect a security meeting to be happening here. But then again, Kigotho, good morning. And thank you so much for joining us right about now. What is happening where you are? Thank you very much, uh, Sam Jaroge. Indeed, it's a good morning from Naivasha town. This is in Nakuru County. And uh, we are coming to you live from here, uh, having uh, toured the, most of, the, uh, of my part uh, yesterday. I toured the Mao uh, complex that has been controversial, that has uh, brought a lot of controversy. Uh, people being told to be evicted, others saying that they bought the land uh, genuinely and other, others saying that there are schools there, there are hospitals and others even saying the land belongs to them. Uh, yesterday we, had, we held a meeting with the uh, Rift Valley uh, Regional Coordinator George Natembea who briefed us on the progress of the eviction that are supposed to be happening next week and uh, Natembea said that they are not going to uh, leave any stone unturned until every part of Mau is reclaimed back. We were able to visit the Mau complex uh, uh, by air and on foot and we were able to see the destruction that is being caused by human activities, charcoal burning, uh, they are uh, logging, Ill uh, illegal logging uh, by members of the public. And we have also witnessed uh, cattle uh, grazing along the riverbanks, which is making the waters that are running down to the Mara to be dirty and contagious to, to, the, to those who are living uh, downstream. We were able also to be briefed by uh, some of the officers that we found on the ground that the indigenous trees, that is the oak, the cedar, have been cut down to the minimal size. So a lot of the forest cover has been cut down and also the bamboo uh, has been cut down. This endangering the lives and the ecosystem surrounding the Mau uh, complex. And today uh, the regional coordinator is having a security meeting at, uh, at, uh, around this place uh, to just uh, brief the officers what they are supposed to be doing and also uh, to brief the security officers on what is uh, likely to be happening next week. Also, we have been briefed that this eviction that are, are supposed to be uh, happening next week are not going to be forceful. In fact, uh, according to uh, Natembea, the eviction will be willingly done according to how the people will like it to be done. 
for example, uh, they are going to initiate a program where you plant trees in the, tree, uh, in the land that you had occupied as you prepare to move. Uh, they have also said that, that those people who were living in Mao are not supposed to be compensated since it is a government land. He has also talked about primary schools that uh, were built using CDF money in that area. And they have said that according to Ministry of Education, there were no existing schools in Mao complex. And all those schools are supposed to be demolished. And the, those, uh, those uh, pupils and students who are going to those schools are uh, transferred to other schools. He has also uh, raised concern about the misuse of CDF, whereby candidates who are registered in other schools, but they go to school in Mao complex schools, whereby uh, there has never been uh, uh, exams done in Mao complex. All the students have been going uh, to other schools. So maybe uh, what we are expecting next week and uh, probably the whole of uh, today, uh, the security meetings and also the briefing from uh, the higher offices on what to do and what not to do when it comes to the evictions. We have also... Uh, we have intelligence that the deputy president is also expected tomorrow uh, to uh, preside over a Harambe in this area. And he is also going to, to uh, visit uh, somewhere we call Bahati, also for a fundraiser. And maybe the, we will also follow up on those stories. From Naivasha town, uh, Nakuru County, my name is Kigodo Mwangi. I will be bringing you uh, up to speed anything that will be happening around this place so that you can keep your day uh, into uh, focus. And Joroge, if you're planning to come for a weekend in Naivasha, you ought to budget better because all the houses have been uh, occupied uh, because there is a meeting uh, of Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. There are a lot of people who are here in these uh, streets of Naivasha. So every house has been raised to the power of uh, something to do with four, not like us, uh, 24, but uh, a little bit uh, to the power of four. My name is Kigodo Mwangi, signing out from Naivasha Town, Nakuru County. Thank you so much, Kigotho Mwangi, for that update live uh, from Naivasha, Nakuru County. And remember, over the weekend, uh, leaders drawn uh, from the North Rift region, uh, led by Elgeo Marokwet, Senator Kipchumba Moore, commended call on the Ministry of Environment and Cabinet Secretary Kiriako Tobiko to engage area leaders before the government embarks on phase two Mao evictions. So definitely, this is a story that we shall keep up updating you on in as far as what will be developing is concerned and also he says KICD is having a conference in Naivasha. Remember also Honorable Emani Kor has raised some proposals to amend the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development Act and therefore it believes a lot to be desired in terms of uh, what will be coming forth from Naivasha as far as soon as this particular leaders and uh, education stakeholders keep debating this very issue but for now do you agree with the sentiments expressed by ceo kenya film and classifications board ezekiel motua on uh, the ban of wamlambes wamnyonyes as well as tetema as uh, you know offensive utterances and we've got a shiksha aurora who's joining us right about now with feedback on that very issue so shiksha what are kenyans saying then as far as this issue is concerned well they have a lot to say and you know without further ado let's get right into it right now on twitter we've got a couple of tweets that's at paul david davis who says i have never known their basis unless he tells us how they analyze and reach into conclusions nope so yep that's a no from him he doesn't agree uh, with the ban that dr ezekiel ezekiel Muchoa has enforced i've got uh, at mange shiko who says no i don't support that because to him it's not good but to us out here it's awesome moving on We've got uh, another tweet right here, and that's from at Chuera, who says, I didn't know KFCB is also regulating audio content. But then again, why wait a couple of months or later to purport to ban a song? Just give people guidelines. Now, this is very important because a lot of people have been saying the same thing. It is quite uh, a common complaint that why are you waiting for a year to ban a song that has been played over and over again on radio stations, uh, on TV. We've also heard it, we've had it on our phones, on 
on YouTube. It's almost hit 4 million views, by the way, on YouTube. Moving on, we've got another one from Joe Harwood who says, Honestly, it's part of his mandate. For the sake of my young daughters, I support him 100%. That's the first one in support of Dr. Ezekiel Mutua's ban uh, of, uh, you know, not playing these two songs, that's Wamlambez and Tatema, in public places, especially before the watershed hour. We've got another one that comes in from at Kibet T2C11 who says, Yeah, because there's a lot of moral erosion among the children when they listen to such songs, and which is why people time and again have been addressing Dr. Ezekiel Mutua as the moral cop. Because once the moral cop strikes, well, morality will be restored. Moving on at Vizay Shikutua who says, How can we side with him? Yet that's the kind of music being played in Kenya. No youth has complained, so why ban these songs? Seasons come and people. Now just to, you know, go on to that matter a bit more and touching on that she says it's being played not just nationally well it's also being played internationally because we've seen celebrities like christina milan jamie fox among others who have known this as uh, a greeting nowadays instead of a song nowadays it's known as a greeting to others as well not just kenyans moving on we've got uh, eric moria on facebook by the way at k24 tv you can get in touch as well over there we've got uh, a facebook message from him saying Damage already done in memory cards, phone memory and drives. And that is nothing but the truth. Another message uh, from Parto Patrick. That's a comment that says there are still some more songs he should ban. I would provide the list if he's ready to ban them. We need some good content. Another one here from Julius Ratko Giambo who says, in fact, the artist should be charged in court. And that's a very crucial question. Maybe in future, we'll be seeing this happening. Who knows? Only Dr. Zekel Mutua will be able to answer that. We've got another one from Chiro Nyogoti who says, All that time Zimecheza walikuwa wapi? Again, a question that has been asked time and again where have they been for the past one year isn't it too late to do it but then again dr ezekiel mutua actually says that nope it's never too late it's now or never moving on at malalo benson who says i do support but he always does it too late when those dirty stuffs have already entered in children's minds i think he means dirty stuff has already entered in children's minds and of course, I think that's something that uh, we've heard over and over again. It's too late. It's too late. Moving on, Dennis Muturiu says, no, originally the name came from an ice cream shop. Other meanings are from one's own conscience. Samuel, yes. what do you think? I agree with Dennis. The original uh, uh, basis of using this particular term is actually from an ice cream shop. That is where it all originated. As far as how it has been connotated by people over time, that's a totally uh, different matter. But after Disney World taking over Hakuna Matata, maybe our next slogan should be that. But let's move on to other stories of the day, whereby Machiako's governor is this day officially opening a cancer center in Machakos County and would like to cross over there and listen into what is happening in Machakos. Currently addressing, I believe, is the first lady of uh, the county of Machakos, that is uh, Lillian Ganga Mutua. So we'll be listening in to what she has to say and then uh, we keep appreciating the events as they come forth from Machakos continue to invest in healthcare because as we all know a healthy nation is a productive nation. A big thank you to my team, Dr. Ansent, Waziri Naomi, um, Waziri Ruth, Mary Musembi, all the doctors for the, for the work you've done with me and we'll continue to do the good work in the next three years. I send my love and prayers to all people battling cancer today across the country. We love you. It shall be well. It shall be well. Thank you and God bless you. Asante. Mtasoma otuba kwa kingereza ni kivulani ya banini na kiswahili. It's only about eight minutes long. Ladies and gentlemen, today Lillian and I are extremely happy to at last open the Machakos Cancer Care and Research Center, which is the first of its kind by a county government in Kenya. Cancer is a disease that does not discriminate on age, gender, place of birth, or even career. However, its management and treatment 
has favored the rich in Kenya. With the opening of this center, residents of Machakos County registered in the Universal Healthcare Program will receive quality screening, diagnosis, counseling, and chemotherapy treatment, and also surgery and management free of charge. Others from the Sekeb region of Makueni and Kitui will pay a very small rate and the citizens of this country will also come and receive treatment with a subsidized uh, program that will be the cheapest in the country of Kenya. Our aim is to ensure that cancer treatment is, uh, treatment is for all and not just a few. Nduguzangu. Matibabu ya ugonjwa wa saratani ya makansa siyo ya matajiri pekeao. Kila mkaji wa machakos, hata hawe, awe hana viatu kwa sababu ya upweke, atapata matibabu sambamba na yule tajiri mwenye nyumba na magari chunguzima. Sote tuliumbwa na mwenyezi mungu na mimi Alfred Nganga mutua na serikali yangu ya machakos, tumejitolea kwa kikishi ya kwamba mwanainchi amepata matibabu ya kufaa. Hiyo ndiyo kazi mwenyezi mungu ametupatia. I wish to commend half Machakos First Lady Lillian, who has been running, who has been to basically every corner of Machakos County in the last six years, running cancer screening sessions. However, after all these sessions, she would come home slightly sad. Sad not just because the sessions identified people with cancer, but because that was just it, identification. Today she's very happy because we can do more than just find out whether one has cancer. We can treat and manage the disease and also do it for free for thousands of our people who will no longer have to choose between food and cancer medication. Now let me reveal that uh, last night I saw that she found it very hard to sleep due to excitement of today's launch because the people she loves so much can now be given a new lease of life because we can do more than just screen, pray, and wish them well. We can now treat and manage the disease. You know, it is quite heartbreaking when you know people die just because they are poor or lack affordable health care. You know, for example, one evening a few years ago, Lillian and I came here to tour the hospital at night and we were at the emergency center, and we found a woman seated at a corner and uh, she was asked, are you okay, by Lillian? And she said she's sick. And she opened her top, and she had a swollen breast that was dark, up to here, very, very big. And uh, she had never thought about getting tested for cancer. It was, not, it was not possible, but it was very clear that this was a form of cancer. So she got referred to Kenyatta National Hospital for treatment and she died two weeks later. Quite sad that we can lose people today in this era just because of lack of affordable treatment and lack of knowledge about this disease. And that is why we're here. Today. That is the governor, Machakos County, Alfred Ganga Motua, who is just officially opening the cancer center in that particular county, where he says residents of Machakos will receive services for free. Those from Kitui and Makueni will pay a size or rather cheaper rate compared to other facilities in the country, as well as all Kenyans will be in a position to access this particular facility at a highly subsidized rate. It is the report that takes us to a break right here on the show. We'll be back in a few. <laughs>